go. All right, in this video, we are going to derive the C2H character table. And a lot of times, the best way to start out is to um, start with a molecule that has the symmetry that you're trying to derive. So um, here's a molecule, this uh, ethylene that has different substitutions, um, trans to one another. And uh, what we're, we need to do first is, so this has C2H symmetry. So what we need to do first is come up with all of the operations in this C2H point group. And we're always gonna have identity operation. You know, um, that's just, you know, doing nothing to the molecule. What other operations do we have? Well, C2 tells us, the, the name of the point group tells us we have a C2. And the C2 in this case um, goes right down center of this molecule. And so it wraps around here. It's 180 degree rotation, right? 360 degrees divided by n. It's gonna take this green fluorine atom, and put it into this green fluorine atom, this white hydrogen atom, and put it into this white hydrogen atom. And that's also gonna interconvert the carbons. That's what it does. So we have a C2. And we can't do a C2 twice. That's the same as identity. So that's not a unique operation. Um, so what else do we have? Well, the name of the point group also gives us a hint that we have a sigma H. And indeed, we do have a sigma H. That's just a mere plane. Um, and it's if this is a planar molecule. You'll always have a mere plane if you have a planar molecule. Um, but this mere plane um, cuts through uh, the C2. And it's going perpendicular or horizontal to the C2. It's just in the plane of the molecule, so it doesn't change the location of any of these atoms. I mean, it takes the top half of the atom, puts in the bottom half of the atom, it's the top half of the atom, it's putting, it's seeing itself in the mirror, but that's it. So we have a sigma H, and uh, that's it. There's only one mirror plane. There's no sigma Vs or sigma Ds. And we do have one other operation, which is inversion. Remember the inversion, the best way to think about it is that it takes any point arbitrary point x comma y comma z and takes it to negative of itself, negative x, negative y, negative z. And so the way to think about this uh, spatially is that if you have something at the top left, so this, how we drew it, is top left and behind, sort of, sort of top left and back, it's gonna go to the opposite. So it's gonna go to front, right, and, um, well, top, we have top, left, and behind, and it goes front, front, right, uh, front, right, basically. So the opposite, let, let's see, let me, let, me, let me do that better. So top, left, and back, um, bottom, right, and front, that would be the opposite. This one, this hydrogen, right, is in the back, in the top, and uh, is on the right, and then it went to the opposite of that. So it went to the bottom and it went to the left and went to the front, the exact opposite, the exact name. So because these things are interconverting, right? And we get the same molecule uh, back with one another when we do this point of inversion, you can see these arrows are all gonna go through the center. If I drew it right, all they're gonna go through the center of the molecule. It's called an inversion center for that reason. These are our only four operations in this point group. C2H. And then we have to uh, put them into classes. Um, and in this case, it's pretty straightforward, but I can tell you a little bit of guidance for this for more complicated examples. Identity and inversion are always in a class by themselves. Um, and then the rotations sometimes are grouped together, but we only have one rotation, so that's going to be by itself. And same thing with the mare planes. If you have multiple sigma H's here, those might be uh, grouped together. There's rules that I go over in many of my other character uh, table derivation videos for more complicated cases when when they're going to be grouped together when they're not going to be. But in this case, they're only one mirror plan, and all these are different, right? So they're all going to be um, separate classes. Okay, so uh, once we got all of that done, I'm just going to clear everything here and start fresh. And I'm going to define. Uh, I'm going to start writing out the skeleton of our C2H character table. So we're gonna write on the top left, our point group of the character table, which is C2H. And then we have our um, four classes. And I'm dropping the hat notation before I had hat notation. That's to signify an operation. But now we're talking about this identity class. So I don't use that hat notation. I have E, 
I have um, C2, the principal rotation axis, the only rotation axis, and I have identity, and I also have uh, the near plane sigma H, and we'll put uh, another column here for various functions that we can test. So um, let's draw our axis system. We'll draw our axis system. Always have to have with character tables the way that everybody does it, and you have to do it uh, if you're gonna get the right answer, is the Z has to be the principal rotation axis. So that's your C2. Um, and then your X and Y, you can define however you want. Of course, they have to be all pitted perpendicular to one another, but the math will work out even if you, you know, swap X and Y here. And because we have uh, four um, classes in our point group, we know from our character table rules video that the number of classes has to equal the number of irreducible representations. And so we're gonna have four vectors or irreducible representations. And I'm gonna call, let's call those temporarily gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, gamma four. Later on at the end, once we derive what the vectors are, we'll be able to substitute in Mulliken symbols here using our Mulliken symbol rules to give these proper names. But right now we don't know what they are. So we just call them gamma. Our first irreducible representation, gamma one, for any character table is always ones across the board. So that's an easy one. And then there's another thing we can do, which is we can fill in the dimensionalities. The dimensionalities, there's another character table rule in the character gone over in the, that I go over in the character table rule video, which says that the sum of the squares of the dimensionalities, so in here we don't know what the dimensionalities are. Dimensionality refers to the character under the identity, E. We don't know what they are right now, so I'm just going to use um, variables a, b, and c. But the sum of the squares, so a squared plus um, one squared plus b squared plus c squared, the sum of these squares is equal to the order of the point group, which is just the number of uh, symmetry operations in the point group, which in this case is four. We have one um, each in each class. And so these values have to be um, whole numbers. That they weigh one, two, three, four, or five. Um, and 90% of the time or greater, they are uh, ones or twos. Only in the really high symmetric point groups like tetrahedral and octahedral are you going to have um, threes or fours. So you're looking for ones or twos here most of the time. And the only way that this uh, equation can be valid is if, if they're all one. Indeed, one squared plus one squared plus one squared equals four. So we can erase A, B, and C and now put ones here. And I'm gonna erase this uh, to give us some more room. Uh, but now we can test various functions. There, there's different ways to do this. Um, one way actually before we test different functions is actually to show you how to do this without testing any functions. And then in a separate video, I'll show you how to do it with functions and we'll go over all the different functions. Um, but to do this without functions, we would just use another character table rule, which is the orthogonality principle. And what that says is that gamma one has to be orthogonal to gamma two, gamma three, and gamma four. And all those combinations, gamma two with gamma three, and gamma two with gamma four, and gamma three with gamma four, all have to be orthogonal. That means dot product has to be equal to zero. And um, in order for that to happen, you're gonna have to have two positive ones and two negative ones, okay? So um, what it ends up being really easily is just you have, um, you put the two negative ones in all the different combinations you have, and these are all the different combinations. And that gets you your four components. We can test that the dot product is equal to zero. For example, gamma one and gamma two, um, we can do one comma one comma one, uh, that's gamma one, and then gamma two is one comma one comma negative one and negative one. Um, and that's equal to zero, okay? But technically what you have to do, or, what you have to do is you have to multiply one of these vectors by the uh, number of symmetry operations in each class. Well, the number of symmetry operations in each class is just one. So you're gonna be multiplying this by one <clears throat> across the board. It doesn't change anything, um, but we can simplify that now to one, 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 and one, one, negative one, negative one. And then to show you how the dot product works, just as a reminder, right, we multiply the first elements, we multiply the second elements and then we add all the elements, sum across the elements, one times negative one and one times negative one. And so that equals zero. 
And so it's orthogonal. And all of these are going to be end up being orthogonal. You can try, um, and, and that's what we have to try to do is make all these orthogonal, okay? And so those are orthogonal, right? And I just kind of put these negative ones and ones down um, willy-nilly, right? I just thought, said, oh, I only need two negative ones, right? But we have to check that all of these are orthogonal. So if we went through and uh, now tried, you know, we can see that gamma one dot with gamma three and gamma one dot with gamma four are gonna be orthogonal because again, we have two negative ones, that's good. But what happens if we do gamma two dot with gamma three? That's gonna cause um, uh, a problem because one times one is one, one times negative one is negative one. So if I write down here, just keeping track, we're doing gamma two dot with gamma three. One times negative one is negative one. Negative one times negative one is one. And one times negative one is negative one. So we also got zero. So that checks out. And uh, gamma two dotted with gamma four, let's try that. Um, one times one is one. One times one is one. So we'll put positive there. And negative one times negative one is positive. Negative one times negative one is positive. Uh-oh, we ran into a problem. So, um, Gamma four is looking to be probably bad, right? Um, so far, we know the dimensionality there is one. And just to remind us, this is what gamma, uh, I'm gonna erase this part. That's what gamma four is. So gamma three was, gamma two was good because it went with gamma uh, 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 three. And so what's our other permutation we can do here? We can put a negative one there and then try like this way, right? We actually didn't have that. So what happens if we do it that way? Then we have, so it's just puzzling it out. One and one is one. One and uh, negative one is negative one. And negative one and one is negative one. And negative one and negative one is one. So that goes gamma two dotted with gamma four equals zero. So let's see, we did gamma two and gamma three as one, negative one, one, and negative one. Um, gamma three and gamma four. Gamma four, three and gamma four is one. One, negative one, negative one. So everything checks out, all the permutations work out. Um, and so that's how you could derive the character table um, without using any functions um, at all. The only thing we'd have to do at this point is change these Molkin symbols into these, these gammas into Molkin symbols. So the rules for that are we use, um, if the dimensionality is one, we use an A or a B. So all these have dimensionalities of one. And so all these are gonna be A's or B's. We use an A if we are symmetric with respect to the principal rotation axis, which is C2. So we have two A's and two B's. B's for negative ones, because we're anti-symmetric with the principal rotation axis. And then if we have an I inversion, we um, give it a G garata if we are symmetric. So A sub G um, for a positive one, B sub G, oh, sorry. Um, this should not be it. B sub G here. For a positive one, and then negative one is going to be a U for an inversion called Ungarata. These are German. So we have A G, A U, B U, and B G. And there we have it. We derive the character table. In a different video, I'll show you how to do this a different way without puzzling it out using the orthogonality theorem. We'll do it instead with functions.